well, we feel fortunate that we've been able to get outdoors for two days, and um, it's been good for us because we haven't practiced much outside. Uh, didn't practice much outside for the Auburn game, didn't practice much outside for the Florida game, so it's great to get out there. And I think it's a little different for the players, and um, you know, we're slowly working ourselves back in shape. We've actually had three fundamental practices where we work a lot of technique, work a lot against each other, um, don't work a lot against system or scheme, but uh, really trying to get the players back into football shape after uh, having a little bit of time off. And we've made nice progress each and every day, and um, hopefully we'll be able to continue that for the next two days. Um, this is a you know, special game in a lot of ways, uh, especially a special for our players. Uh, you don't get uh, opportunities like this very often, um, and um, it's certainly a special opportunity for our players. And as a coach, you know, you, you want to make sure that you do everything that you can to, you know, help those players uh, get back to playing their best football. And um, it's a challenge uh, with this much time off. It's a challenge with this much attention. It's a challenge with uh, all the things that you know go into playing these kind of games, but the number one thing that we want to try to get with our players is to focus on the things that you need to do to play your best football. You know, Texas is a great football team. Uh, they're very well coached. They got a lot of good players. I'm not getting into all their stats and who's who. You know all that. Uh, but you know, this is probably the best all-around team that we played all year, and uh, they've got lots of team speed. Uh, they got a lot of playmakers on offense. They got a really good quarterback. Uh, who does a great job of executing their offense and distributing the ball to their players. And, you know, their defense is one of the tops in the country. Uh, and they also do a very good job on special teams because they got great team speed. So uh, this is a challenging game for us in a lot of ways. It's a great opportunity. Um, and um, we just as coaches want to do the best job that we can to try to get our team to play their best football of the year. Coach, two questions for you, and I apologize if you've answered the first one already, but do you change anything knowing that you have two former assistants on the, the team that you're facing? Do you have to change anything? I mean, does any did any kind of tendency, schemes, anything like that, will they be able to well, bring anything to the table know, for we, Texas? We, we always do self-scout, uh, you know, on what we do. Um, you know, we kind of know what they do, too. So it be interesting to think if they need to change what they're doing. But uh, I, I think we – you know, who you are is more important than what you do. I always say that. And who we are as a football team in terms of what we do and how we execute is important. Um, and I don't really think there's a whole lot of changes that you can make to do what? Are you going to trick yourself or trick them? I mean, we do what we do. Uh, we always do self-scout, so we know what our tendencies are. We know what the other team thinks about us and what we need to do to balance that. Uh, sometimes terminology things and what you call things may be something that um, and signals and things like that are all things that you want to make sure you're you know not letting them have an advantage on but other than that I, I don't know how we can change our team uh, just because everybody you play knows your tendencies they watch the film they watch the tape so and we've changed some as a team since since um, you know those guys have been here so I don't know what we can do different to make it better. And I asked a couple of the guys, you know, has it really sunk in yet that you're going to California to play for the national championship? Have you taken any time or had any time to reflect on the tremendous no, I, accomplishments? I really have already said that I'm not worried about winning a national championship, and I don't want our players to worry about it either, and I would appreciate it if you didn't ask them, although I know you will, uh, because what I want our players to focus on is playing their best football and assume that they're going to play the best football team they ever played and they're going to be playing against the best player they ever played against. And that's what they should be working to do, and that's what they should be focused on. So what you're talking about is clutter, and I would rather them not be worried about that. The game's still going to get played on 50 yards wide and 100 yards deep, and how they play in that game, and I don't care what award they won or who made All-American or how many we had, none of that stuff's going to matter when the game starts. It's going to be how we play, and that's what the players need to understand. So I'm glad you asked the question. And I've told them that, so now they can hear it again on TV. So it'll be good. Let me, excuse me, let me clarify. I was just talking about your accomplishments in getting to the national championship. That's all I was saying, Coach. But if you don't, if you don't have success in the next game, it really doesn't matter. Can you know, name any? I can't even name anybody that's played in this game in the last three years and didn't have success. I don't know who they are. I can tell you the ones that did. 
So, you know, you know, you create an opportunity for yourself. So your focus should be on what you need to do to take advantage of it. Well, I think that um, it means that they're playing with good technique and good hand placement and uh, fundamentally doing a good job. And I think that's credit to each and every one of them in terms of the focus and attention to detail that they prepare with and play with. Uh, but I think it's also a credit to the coaches and the coaching staff who work with them to get them to do that. And this group does a really good job of preparing for the game. They're smart, they play smart, um, and they execute well. Uh, yes, Coach. Uh, we're doing a story on uh, special admission students and trying to. How important is it to have the flexibility to be able to bring in those guys when a lot of your competitors do too? And can you kind of have there been a lot of success stories in that regard? Well, I think we've had a tremendous amount of success stories in terms of uh, our graduation rate, uh, the number of players that we've had that have made um, freshman SEC honor roll because they have over a three point. And I think if you look closely, some of those guys may have been special admit, so to speak. But um, so I'm really pleased and happy with the job that we do and how we manage our students here and uh, the responsibility and accountability they have toward academics and the success that they've had in academics. Uh, but I also want to reiterate to you my philosophy of I think that I guess I grew up around land grant schools and land grant schools are supposed to educate all the people. And they're not select enrollment institutions, and public institutions are not select enrollment institutions, but they have become that for some reason. So they don't really educate all the people. But we want to create opportunities for people, and as long as we feel like they have the character and attitude and will respond to the help and direction that we give them to have success here, and we have a pretty good track record of that with the people that we have, um, we want to give people an opportunity, and we're happy that we're able to give people an opportunity. No different than uh, Terry and I making a significant contribution to first-generation scholarships. We're creating an opportunity for someone who may not have the opportunity if someone didn't help create an opportunity for them. No different than Michael Orr in the, the movie uh, The Blind Side. If somebody didn't help him, he had the work ethic and he had the ability to go to college, to graduate, and to be a first-round draft pick. Somebody helped him take advantage of his gifts. And I think he's better off, the world's better off, and we're all better off because of it. And the question I would ask, do, do we all do enough? Do you do enough? Do I do enough? Do we do enough to help other people be able to take advantage of their gifts? Some people have ability and they have work ethic and really never get an opportunity. Coach, can you kind of touch on the uh, some of the unheralded role of the scout team and specifically Robbie Zell and what he brings? Who? Um, well, he he's practices with the varsity most of the time, uh, but when he was on the scout team, he did a fantastic job because the kind of person he is and the kind of enthusiasm he has and uh, he really enjoys playing and does a fantastic job, and his energy and enthusiasm affects a lot of other people. But uh, I don't think you can get ready to play and prepare for a game if you don't get uh, a great look by your look squads. And, you know, it's a pretty thankless job, too, uh, because most of those guys don't get to play in the game. Uh, they don't win awards. They don't get their names in the paper, although we try to create awards and have scout team players of the week on offense, defense, and special teams every week uh, so that those guys do get some positive self-gratification for what they do for the team. Uh, and they can be on the war daddy board if they do a good job in practice all week and are recognized you know, by the, the, the coaches and their teammates for that. Uh, but we, we, we can't get ready for the game if we don't get a great look uh, from our our look squads and um, I think probably those guys don't get enough accolades they don't get enough attention from any of us including sometimes the coaches who spend their time all of us spend our time coaching the guys that are going to play in the game uh, and those guys do a fantastic job and probably the most difficult 
task that anybody has um, is probably those guys in terms of the perseverance that they have to have um, relative to what they get out of it. Coach, just separate from this game, I guess, when you see a guy like Will Muschamp who is, has gone so far and now is in line to get, get such a big job, how gratifying is that for you, You know, somebody who you know so well and it, it kind of came up on uh, you know, working under you? Well, I, I think that for me, and probably to put it in perspective, is, um, you know, when, when one of your children do something that makes you proud, not that I view these guys as and don't have a tremendous amount of respect for them as men and uh, very good character quality people who have tremendous work ethic and are very good at what they do and have a tremendous amount of professionalism. Um, but I think people could relate to anybody that has children. When somebody, when your children do something that's very good, that makes you feel good and proud uh, because of their accomplishment, you know, that's how you feel when coaches on your staff go on and do bigger and better things and have success in what they do. And uh, none of those that that have, um, whether it's Mark D'Antonio at Michigan State uh, or Jimbo or, you know, Derek Dooley or, you know, Will, you know, I mean, I'm really proud and want to see them all do extremely well. Um, and, you know, I've had we've had to compete against each other before, whether it was Bill Belichick, who I used to work for, um, who probably feels a little bit that way for me. Um, And we're good friends and you compete and you play against each other, but you don't dislike each other and you don't not have the same amount of respect and admiration and want to be helpful to those guys if you can, even though when you compete against somebody, you know, for that moment in time. You know, you're trying to do the best you can for your team. And also, as far as, as your team, with the, I guess, the benefit of, of with, the, with the the way the SEC championship game went last year against Florida seemed to help maybe in preparations this time around. Would you view the bowl game in a similar way, meaning that what happened in New Orleans last year could, could help get everybody on the same page this time? Well, I, I can't. I don't know. I... I I don't know. I think that every experience that you have uh, should be an, a learning experience. And, um, you know, I think the motivation is a little bit different. So, therefore, I hope the passion should be a little bit different. Um, and I think that all the experiences that we've had to this point, good and bad, uh, should be – should reinforce what we're trying to build in terms of character and attitude and – what it takes to um, be successful, you know, on a championship level. I mean, you can assume the other team wants to win. You can assume they know how to win, and you can assume that they want to win too because I think they've only lost one game in the last two years on the last play of the game. Is that not right? So, and even though all the talking heads out there seem to want to make them not so, like, whatever – I think they're pretty good. I think they got a lot of good players, and I think they won a lot of games because of it. And I think our players need to have respect for that and get ready to play their best football game of the year.